So you own an RV and you want to bring it in to Yellowstone National Park, which who could blame you? This bucket list national park, which is home to hundreds of waterfalls, geysers, and wildlife galore, is one of the most epic places you can possibly spend time outdoors. And Yellowstone National Park is one of the largest national parks in the United States at over 2 million acres. So bringing an RV, into something that large should be a piece of cake, right? 19 feet, I yes. think? Yes. Nothing, no go. Don't go to the west parking lot. There's a reason these rentals are so small. It gets complicated. <laughs> it's time to let go and get going. So we have a 40 foot long, 13 foot six tall beast of a fifth wheel. <laughs> and today, we're gonna show you what it's like to take that straight into Yellowstone National Park and see what we can do. Might be a good idea, might not. We're actually not in Yellowstone National Park yet. Get ready for this view. <laughs> but we are parked uh, just outside of Grand Teton National Park. Now Yellowstone is, I don't know, like maybe like 20, 30 minutes this way. So this National Park and Yellowstone National Park touch each other. Well, let me show you the view inside the rig too. It's pretty, pretty wild. So we're packing up. This is flipped up, but look at our, uh, <laughs> this is from inside our RV. You can literally be doing dishes if you want to and get this view, so. That's the dream, right, with RVing. You can just walk out of your RV with your coffee in the morning, sit, see the view. And I don't know of any spots like this <laughs> in Yellowstone, but stick with us till the end of the video and we'll tell you what we think is the best alternative or way to RV Yellowstone. There are 12 RV parks in Yellowstone and there's over 2,000 RV sites in Yellowstone. So on paper, it seems like it would be the ideal RVing destination. Almost all those are not meant for an RV, honestly, over like 25 feet. When you look on paper, some of them will have a length of 40 feet, 40 feet max length. If you have a travel trailer, I mean, truck and trailer, pff, you're talking like a 20 foot trailer probably. If you're not during peak season and it's off season, like half those campgrounds shut down. Right now, there's only like six out of the 12 campgrounds that are even open or they're under construction. They like to do all the stuff in the off season. Our plan today is not to go into Yellowstone and just say, hey, let's see if we can find an RV site. We're gonna show you some alternatives to how you can do something like this in a big rig. Uh, but we're gonna take this big rig through Yellowstone, three and a half hours-ish from the south entrance to the west entrance. And we do hope to make a few stops along the way. And we're gonna talk about what it's like to camp in Yellowstone as well in an RV because we have done that as well, but we have not done it in something this size. I do not know what it is about the Teton Mountains, but they are just something special. I can't even put my finger on it, but this place, I'm telling you, it will like touch your heart. And I'm really sad to leave. Good buddy. I know, you're almost done. Put the Legos in the bag. You're doing good. You can tell how great of a spot this is. I mean, as soon as we're pulling out, literally an RV's sitting there ready to go. We, we met the couple this morning. <laughs> so sweet. They honeymooned here in the Tetons 57 years ago, so I couldn't think of a better person to, to pull in and enjoy the Tetons than, than them. How amazing. They came with their travel trailer yesterday through Yellowstone thinking they could get a campsite. They're like, no. They said everything, they said the whole park was full. They couldn't even get into a campground. With their like, it looked like a 19 to 22 foot travel trailer. It was Doesn't a that... little Imagine Aim. Oh, that's like, yeah, I think with a 19 feet, I yes. think? Yes. Nothing, no go. <laughs> no camp in here with your 19 foot travel trailer. Wow. four entrances into Yellowstone. You've got a north, east, west, south. Again, it's massive. It's over two million acres. <laughs> uh, we're coming from the south and then we're going to go up through Yellowstone and then come out the west entrance. So I know for sure, we're hoping, we'll show today that big rigs can do that route. Now the other two routes are coming out the north or out the east, I'm not going to vouch for those. <laughs> we're just going to show you this one, so do your research. A little bit of a no man's land between Teton National Park and Yellowstone National Park, but it's like I think it's like a national forest. I'll put it on the screen what it actually is. So if you're only searching for campgrounds within Yellowstone National Park, know that there are, just like we showed at Upper Teton View, there are boondocking spots and national forest spots that are around the park as well. Hi. Hello. Hi. 
And then did you guys need a map? You want a map? Sure, sure we'll take a map. There you go. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. We are now officially in Yellowstone National Park. Are y'all planning out the trip? Look, what if I see a waterfall? <laughs> It's still it's, blowing my mind. Like I'm driving through Yellowstone National Park, seeing all this beauty in these cliffs. And I'm like, wow. we have our home with it. My home is driving through the park right now. That still just like blows my mind. If you're not comfortable with a large RV, it's not super sketch, but you know. There's cliffs. You gotta you got pay attention. <laughs> we just saw somebody in a car that I could tell was not comfortable. They pulled over and let us go by. Pretty much always going to get construction, I'm assuming, through these kinds of places. Construction and you're passing two RVs. Yep. Well, hopefully it's not tight. So if you have a long setup like we do, which we're about 65 feet, or if you're above that, I think you can go up to 95 feet total length. The only one you can do like big rigs, basically, it's made for big rigs, it's called Fishing Bridge. That's coming up on the right. I believe it's like a newer campground, full hookups, but it's like 90 bucks a night and it is very difficult to get into. If you have a big rig and you wanna stay in Yellowstone, that's pretty much it. You might be able to squeeze in a mammoth campground. I think there's some that they say are 65 feet total length. So we've already seen at least three signs showing the Continental Divide. Now basically what that is, is a spot in our country where if a drop of rain dropped on the west side of the divide, it would eventually flow through streams and rivers and get all the way over to the Pacific Ocean. But if it landed on the east side of the Continental Divide, that same raindrop, even though we're much farther west at this point, would end up in the Atlantic Ocean. That's super cool. We just drove through the Continental Divide. There's a lot of construction right now, so you gotta kinda look ahead and see that was Kepler Cascades where I think we might have normally been able to get into that, but we've also got construction. It's the most visited area of the park. It's not a bus, but we're longer than the bus. All right, we're in a spot, but I don't know if this is gonna work or not. I'm in the middle of the road, we're gonna have to move. So we saw what looked like RV parking, but then we saw an RV going the other way and we followed the RV instead of going where it looked like RVs were already parked, which makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> so now we're having to go all the way back around. So don't go to the west parking lot. We could not fit into that. Still does not look like official RV parking, but I don't know what else they expect me to do, so. Well, you're in the right spot. There's a ton of RVs. I don't know. We're the only crazy. I guess I need to just park. Okay, so not ideal as far as the parking, but I don't know what else we're supposed to do because there's not long RV parking anywhere. It's always going to talk about you can't RV Yellowstone in a big rig. You can't RV Yellowstone in a big rig. Well, what can you RV Yellowstone in or what should you? Or what's the best to do it, I guess I should say. You are looking at it. There's a reason these rentals are so small. Now there's a micro mini, but even that, you look at the total length of that, and they're like, they're probably over 40 feet. The best thing to RV Yellowstone in is something drivable that is not towing anything behind it. Like this Cruise America right here. That's 25 feet or less. It's all about the total length of Yellowstone and it's about getting into these parking lots. And I just realized I'm still wearing my socks with my sandals. Hey, you're wearing your socks with your sandals too. <laughs> Look at you. I, I was literally just thinking about it as I was looking around. <laughs> I love socks and sandals. Like I know I shouldn't do it, right? And I always wondered why as you got older everybody wore socks and sandals but especially in the rv life when you're taking your shoes on and off on and off on oh and like a hundred times a day in and out of the house because we take our shoes off but i want i love having socks on and i'm just going with it you want the short drivable for two reasons number one your overall length is less and so it's easier to get a sight because really they recommend 40 total feet or less but that is a really small towable trailer and number two if you want to stop at these pull-offs a lot of them do not have RV or trailer parking. You're hoping 
you've pretty much got the whole parking lot. So you want that maneuverability where you could pull into one of these pull-offs and then back up if you need to without a trailer behind you. 30 minutes of just about. We'll see, we don't know. That's Old Faithful, Hensley, you excited? Oh, what is that? It's a geyser! <laughs> Hensley? Yeah. It's, it's a geyser! It's, did you know it's gonna explode? I don't know if he's ever it's seen one. I don't think he's ever seen a geyser. Do you know we're coming? Thank you for saving it for us. Thank you for the seat. <laughs> that was a geyser, but about to what? It is. Okay. Is that it? No, this one. Oh, right here. Oh, old Faith was there. Oh, wow. I think it's so cool that she's really into facts and learning things, but now it's like in a book and then you get to show it to them in real life. There's an artist that draws all these pictures of the national parks and then they have like really funny sayings about, about the park. Whoa. It exactly at the time it was supposed to. Was it exactly? Yeah. It exploded it goes, one it minute goes early. This. Right what did it do, JJ? It goes, it goes this. Oh, yeah. Very tall. <laughs> it is. Is that cool? Uh -huh. A bird. <laughs> Squirrel. Squirrel. Was that cool? Uh huh. So Yellowstone has the highest concentration of geysers in the world. Awesome. Good job, JJ. Awesome. High five. I thought go up there. Sorry, sorry. Bro. It's still crazy to me that we are literally sitting on a volcano, essentially. So we got here around noon. I must say, if we'd gotten here a couple hours later, <laughs> could be tight. You never know. This thing definitely filled up since we got here. Oh my goodness. Felt like this parking lot is a safe bet. You never know. So if you think seeing Old Faithful is an epic once in a lifetime experience, uh, we have got another epic, could be once in a lifetime experience for you because this will not happen for another, what, 20 years? 20 years. <laughs> so now is the time. So if you didn't know, there's a full eclipse coming on April 8th and we are teaming up with Finding Our Someday for the first time ever for a three night <laughs> eclipse event from April 6th to April 9th where we can experience this once in a lifetime opportunity together. So tickets for this event are going to be releasing next week, November 19th. So mark your calendars <laughs> and be ready. We're gonna announce on all of our socials, on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, our newsletters. We have very limited spots for this and this is a well sought after event. So get your RV ready. We have an <laughs> amazing spot on the path of totality in Texas. Cannot wait. <laughs> to announce this, to get this rolling, and to connect with you in April. That was close. So this other fifth wheel over here couldn't go. Because look at this guy. I think he parked. He just parked. Everybody's having to go around him. You ready to go? Here we go. It's like a mass exodus. Bye-bye, geyser. Bye-bye, geyser. This could get tight. When you meet another RV? Yeah. yeah. Coming out of the parking lot. Oh, that's the face. See those people? They're like eating a bag of chips watching us. <laughs> That's the face. That's the face. I wish I had two cameras going to show you their face. The, <laughs> I don't envy you face. Coming up on Grand Prismatic, uh, which is a great stop if you're in a car. <laughs> <laughs> you can also park, there's a, somebody said a slightly larger parking area at Ferry Falls, but Grand Prismatic is one of the busier areas of the park. I think in general, once you're here to really slow or downtown, but you can come here early in the morning, late in the day, and your chances to be increased. It's the middle of the day and it's on the end of the weekend. Oh wow, that was so cool. You got the best view, I think. Right out your window. Just walking on the road. So if you continue going straight here, it'll take you toward Mammoth Hot Springs, Mammoth Campground and all that. We have been here before and we've RV'd. Yellowstone before. And I'm gonna say we kind of hacked it. At the time we had a 30 foot Airstream and then we had a cargo van, 12 passenger van. That was about 19 feet. Um, and so in total length, we were 49 feet. So we're already, even with that setup, over the recommended 40 foot max length you can have. So there's also, just like we showed you boondocking in Teton, there's also boondocking outside the North Yellowstone entrance. So we boondocked there. And then we waited until a weekday. We came into a, the first come first serve at Mammoth. We're in, we got site number 58. I'm gonna go park, put a couple of things out, make sure nobody puts anything on the side. Really what we did within the park to hack the whole park 
was we would get up, and I told him, I said, we're going to get up at 7 a.m. every day. No, we didn't get up at 7. We were, well, like, on the trail at 7. On the trail at 7 every day. So we get up at 6.30 or whatever yeah. every day, and we'd go out, and we'd explore. And we'd be done by, like, 10, 11 a.m. We were done. And then we'd go back out. We'd have an early dinner. We'd go back out around 5 p.m., and we'd explore from 5 to 8 and watch the sunset, see tons of wildlife. Yes. It was awesome we also would move the rv that's the that's the cool thing is we would move our rv to different locations of the park we stayed outside of the park we stayed in a national forest one time where was that west yellowstone we stayed outside of the park yeah in a forest campground and so then we would explore the park from there i think that's one of my favorite things about yellowstone is the diversity when you think of yellowstone you think of oh it's just hot springs but it's so much more than that so beautiful, so much to explore, so much diversity here. So we spent the day driving and talking about how shorter is better when it comes to RVing Yellowstone. But if you've got a large RV, one of your best options might be to camp outside the park <laughs> and then day trip into the park, which is what we're doing for the next week at Red Rock RV Park as we pull in for the Lipper Getaway. Now, if you want more tips about the most visited national park in the country, but you guessed it, it's also very hard to RV. You'll definitely want to check out our video about Great Smoky Mountain National Park. So click here or in the description below.